Hello guys, uh, today in, in this uh, video today I was planning to show another solver and this is a really another another common one and is it the twist solver. It's something to achieve a behavior like that between two points that you can then append or attach to any other structure within the rig and then we're gonna see and again uh, the reason why I'm going through this solver here is um, because I want to show additional stuff. So the way I'm gonna implement uh, the twist solver is not is not the only one. There are many ways. But, uh, it allows me to um, um, show different things again. So let's jump into into Unreal. And before we do anything, this is the final result. So we have the first thing to notice is that the the the, the solver is uh, stretching uh, between two points. These two points are independent from one another, so this can be attached to something and this can be attached to something, and they don't necessarily need to be in a, in a hierarchy for this to work. And then, of course, being a twist solver, the solver twist. And this is really common to see these things in twist bones when it comes to you know achieving a, a, a nice deformation between the elbow and the wrist, and <coughs> oh sorry, and uh, on the on the leg for example. So you can spread the deformation through the joints along along uh, the the length of the leg or the upper leg, lower leg, upper arm, lower arm. Um, but it can be used for many many things like compression compression stuff etc. So let's jump into it because this is this is quite it, it's it's a little bit more commented and I'm doing a little bit more in here compared to the other solvers and um, and the reason is I'm trying different things and see what I what I think is more optimized and readable in the very in the setup event in the setup event and um, again I'm setting everything up like I do in any other solver I said this should dynamically work by changing the bones label variable. So, because this graph, I want to be able to move this graph around in, in inside a different ring. I want to be able to specify the name of these twist bones, and I want the placements of these controls to automatically be placed based on the length of the chain. So, if I change the skeleton and make just, for example, just seven bones, and like we saw last time in the, I think I did it in the arm solver. If I change the skeleton and I change the name. The setup event, these bones will still work. Um, uh, 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 these bones will still be placed automatically. In here, on top of, of that, I'm storing um, static data. What I mean by static data is everything that never changed inside the rig. And again, I'm going to stress this the compiler when you compile all the static data it's already taken care of. you really don't need if you had this inside your main graph it wouldn't take away any any performances if you're evaluating these nodes because the compiler understands that these are static values the only reason i'm doing this is it's for read readability and easy reuse and swapping things so basically here i'm saying uh, find all the bones based on this label and I'm storing them into a bone collection, which happens to be here, a variable. Then I'm saying, uh, for every, uh, uh, give me the first bone. I always want to know what the first bone is. So this is the init, where I'm initializing data, like an init in Python, or a construction script in, in the Blueprint Actor. Um, then I'm saying, give me from this bones collection, so from here, give me the length and give me the last the last bone okay and i'm computing this so i can snap the control so at this point i know all the all the joints the first and the last and this this value gets dynamically generated depending on the length of the chain um, and then i'm also storing the, the 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 collection length i'm not sure that this is being used uh, i've used this uh, afterwards and then, for, for a reason we're going to see later, I also want to know always the second bone in the chain. So I'm getting uh, the getting the item and index. So I, for example, in here to get the the last bone, I usually I mean I I 
what I'm doing is is I'm getting the length of, of, of the of the collection. I'm removing it one and then I'm getting the the, the item at that at, at that subtraction. I mean I, I wish I wish instead of specifying com computing the last index, uh, I wish I could specify something like that, minus one. So it gives me the it starts from the bottom. I don't know if there is a way. If there is, please let me know. So but that's why I am computing it. Um, that's pretty much it. Oh, in, and yes, and then I'm, I'm getting, instead of getting this chain, I'm getting this chain. Because I want to I wanna treat the first bone as special for, for reasons that will come clear when I, when I assemble this twist solver in a more complex one. I don't know when I'm going to make that video. So here we go. We have set bones solve correction. So it's just variables here, really. I'm doing literally nothing and calculating stuff. Another thing I'm doing, uh, once the once the the sorry, I'm yeah. Once I know the the uh, I calculate the distance between here and here, and I'm storing the distance. And and then what I do is I get the first and last bone and that's where I set the, the control offset for these things. So that these things are at zero when the animator animates. So I'm, I'm setting the, the control offset uh, start and end. That's pretty much for the setup. So ideally, I hope I'm not going to break it because this should work. So if you see my twist, they all start with twist, which means if I use my variable bones label and twist, it will return me these all of these let's try to see if I change the variable with underscore zero and compile it you can see that basically um, it only returning me the one that starts with zero but the control gets updated and all these variables gets updated and everything still works that's why again that's why I am storing the variable uh, let's put this back here. And now let's start building the rig. The 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 forward solve I made a sequence node simply because it's easy to read. The first thing I do is I implement the start control. Very simple. I'm saying that this control here drives the first bone. So get bone first and it simply drives it the in, the in translation. That's it. There's nothing else to say. The twist start control drive the translation of the first bone. So that's why the first bone follow. The twist, it's implemented by interpolating, guess what, two, two quaternions. This quaternion, this rotation, and this rotation. And then I'm saying, give me all the bones, and for each item, interpolate this rotation. But how I'm interpolating it? So I get the, the interpolated quaternion by using interpolate quaternion, these two nodes. But then as an alpha, I'm using the ratio. Now this is a really cool thing. The loops in, and this is something I want to talk about, like this, the loops inside and real also gives you a ratio depending on which item along the chain you are in. So it's, if there are 20, uh, let's say, if there are 10 items uh, and you are, you're looping and your item number 4, it would give you 0 0.4. And I'm multiplying that rotation. So it's basically a ramp. It's a ramp between 0 and 1. So if you multiply that ramp through the interpolation, you get a, a super smooth twist between here. Second thing is I'm implementing the aim, and the aim is nothing else than getting the, the twist end control. There is an aim node. The, the, the control translation is the target of the aim, and the first bone is following it. Now remember that the first bone was only connected in translation. It means that the rotation are free to calculate, and here they are. Um, where is it? 
So it's the, the aim which performs rotation. Um, it's connected now to the to bone first, and it's aiming towards this control. And again, I have to change this to location. What it means is that this bone will always look towards that bone. And because this bone follows in translation this, but this also follows, looks always at that, this is the behavior that we get. Very easy. No. So the translation is following this control, but the rotation is following that control. And the fact that this has an IK behavior where the joints stay still and connected, it looks like it's connected. It's really not. It's because of the stretch, which is the next one. So start control, we implemented the twist, we implemented the aim, and now we play here we're going to talk about the squash and stretch. So this area here, let me get rid of this uh, watch value for a minute, stop watching value, uh, which I found really really helpful by the way, I love them, mostly because I can understand what the node does. Uh, I don't want to see that, I don't want to see, stop watching this. Okay, so the squash and stretch is actually, if we want to be really precise, implement stretch and squash. Because the first portion of the graph is about stretch, and the second portion of the graph is, a, is about squash. So, I'm, there are two ways, there are two, two ways of thinking this. Um, if you want to keep everything simple, um, you can implement the entire squash and stretch using pure scale. In my case, for the stretch, which is this behavior, the fact that you know the, the, the chain stretches, um, I'm using translation along the axis. And the reason is if this was if you don't really notice it here because it's basically rigid geometry attached to its its bone. But if this was a skin geometry and you had a, a some and you want a smooth interpolation, if you were to scale along the x-axis this bone, some of the vertices will go back, depending on the weight value that you apply on the skin cluster. And I don't like that. When I stretch, I want to always know where my my deformation is going. If I'm stretching that way, I want the deformation across the 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 geometry to f to go along that way instead of and and otherwise you have to be really careful about your weighting geometry if you want to use scale for stretching and because if if this is if a vertex in here was um, not perfectly aligned with this one which is the pivot from it's scaling from then it would either go forward or backwards but you know in this case it would go backwards and, and that's not what we we, we would want that's that's the only reason I'm using translation. So, okay, how it works? I'm getting the distance between these two nodes. Now you may say you already calculated that. True, but this is the original distance at the very beginning, and I'm storing that for later use. Here instead, I want the live the live uh, length. So I it always going to give me the length that it exists between these two things. So. Let me see. Oh, I have another another one here. So you can say, you, oh, actually this was helpful. This is telling me that it's these these things, these bones, these controls are, are 120 units away from front armor. And if I extend, it gets longer. Once I get that, I basically dividing it. I'm I'm taking the length. Of, of the amount of bones in the chain, and, and I'm subtracting one because because the length yeah the, the length is actually the count, and I'm dividing. So if these were 12 bones, and the distance between is now 120, this should give me 10 because I'm dividing 120 by 12, and that's a amazing math right there. So why am I doing that? It's because I I then can set always the distance of the bones to the x translation of each individual bone remember that this one this 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 object here does not contain all 
the twist bolts, but only these from here to here. We, we set them up here, remember when I said bone second, bone last? And the reason is, I really don't want to translate the first bone. I want that bone to always be a stick stuck to, to the first control. That's the only reason. So it's true, this setup here assumes that basically the joints will always be separated by the same amount. And this is something true. We can modify the graph to not do that, to store the offset between each joint. But usually for twist joints in this case, they're always as, you know, separated by the same amount. Um, so this is what you get. Basically, this joint here is translating by, you know, right now, the local value of this joint here, the local space, as you can see here, of this translation x is 17 units, 17 units. And so the length, the entire length, is divided by 12. And this 12 generates me this value. So each bone in translation x goes to the right place. And it, the feeling that you get is that the, the, the chain is stretching, but it's actually translating per bone. That's it for the translation. And for, for the squash, is it's a little bit more interesting. Uh, and, and the reason is I'm using a combination of the ratio that we saw and this amazing node, with it, which is called evaluation curve, where basically I'm remapping certain values through multiplying the, through the ratio and using it to just scale x and y. Now, the first thing to notice is that right now there is no squash happening. Um, and, and this is a variable that you can specify as squash amount. This squash amount takes whatever calculation I'm doing and interpolates between the value of 1, so the scale here is always 1, so there is no squash, or whatever comes here. In this case, the interpolate node takes the, the default value, which is 0, which means this value will win. This, the, the t is like a, an alpha. And so so right now, y and z, if I watch this value, can I? No, if I watch here, it's 1. So both of them are 1. If I were to set t to 0, b will win. And this is exactly what I'm doing here. Sorry, uh, if I were to set t to 1, b will win. So if I put this to 1, oh, I may have moved something here. This is the behavior that you get. The more, the more you extend the curve, the curve, the, 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 this, this ratio allows me to distribute the scale value that is multiplied by a curve along the chain. And this is where I am multiplying distance and this is why I stored it I want the original distance I'm taking the current distance and I'm using it to divide it from the original distance so if you watch this value here this is what happens and then what I'm doing is I am multiplying by the output of the curve which is also which is its input is the ratio along the curve so what you can get it's Let's see if I can get something cool. I can I can really define the silhouette of this thing. And that's pretty much it for the twist joint. I hope this this helps.